wake up to the facts. When good people are silent, freedom dies. Don't be afraid to ask those tough questions. Be a patriot and join the struggle to keep America free. Freedomdies.com. Let your voice be heard. With no mention of that recall election possible, Governor Walker talked to hundreds of educators today about the future of schools. And as Tony Gallery reports, it may be difficult for the governor to separate policy and politics. Good afternoon. A packed auditorium of educators largely welcomed Governor Walker. The governor reminded them he campaigned before this same convention on a platform of controlling labor costs. And you may not agree with everything I did in the process I did this past year, but I hope you can see how I mentioned this two years ago, that my interest then is the same today, and that is to put the power to control things that happen at the local level firmly in the hands of the people who are elected locally to make those decisions. Here in Milwaukee, in Governor Walker's first public appearance in Wisconsin, since one million signatures were turned in to try to recall him, he stressed bipartisanship, collaboration in education. But Democratic Party officials say his ideas, his track record, fly in the face of that. I'll give him an uh, a, a for dishonesty. Democratic Party of Wisconsin spokesman Graham Zelinsky argues the governor's initiatives in reading are borrowed or duplicative and his education budget cuts still harmful. The governor says educators appreciate his collective bargaining tools even if one superintendent just whispered his support. As he went to sit down said almost under his breath, I can now go back to the office and think more about curriculum than I can in the past where I had to worry about grievances. Yeah, I mean, I definitely could, uh, uh, could identify with that. Ladysmith School District Administrator Kurt Lindau likes the governor's direction, knows a recall election is likely. Do you feel the Governor Walker should be given more of a chance and be allowed to remain in office, or should he be recalled? <laughs> Yeah, that's where the, the rubber meets the road question. Lindau says he may choose to support giving Governor Walker an entire term. The governor's appeal to educators, voters, has just begun. In Milwaukee, Tony Galley, 27 News. Governor Walker is pushing proposed legislation to boost early childhood reading initiatives, better prepare teachers, and give schools report cards. The state superintendent of schools is collaborating on some proposals. The governor didn't take any questions from reporters at that convention. We now have over 11,000 volunteers. Uh, we have over, over 50,000 people that have signed up for our no-sign registration list as well. Uh, and if you're interested in signing up, you can go to verifytherecall.com, sign up as a volunteer, put your name uh, on, on our no-sign registration list, and we'll get a hold of you. The test run, 9,000 in the Kabangi recall. 9,000 signatures should have been challenged that the GAB probably missed. 9,000, 21,000 signatures could have been the difference between a recall or not a recall. Ross Brown, a pleasure as always. Wow. Huh. Now, give us some history here, a couple different issues. First of all, tell us, Not a lot of people don't know what's going on in Wisconsin. You know, there's senators, there's the governor, there's different issues. Give us a little background on this. Sure, sure. Um, it, it, it all started back with uh, when Scott Walker became governor. Um, he decided to reform um some of the, the structural debt in the Wisconsin government. And so what he did was he said, okay, the unions and the benefits and uh, the insurance companies that these unions own have a stranglehold on the state of Wisconsin's budget. So each year they would come and say, you know, we need another $50 million to pay the raises and the in the benefits and whatever else was going to be done. And, he's, and he started out saying, well, okay, what you guys need to do is you need to, uh, you need to uh, start contributing. You need to start contributing 12% of your pension pay-in and like 6% of your health care pay-in. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. Um, you know, and, and you know and I know that nobody gets pensions and health care with 100% paid in. You know, that's that's government benefits for you, right? And so yeah. there, was, <laughs> there was an upswell, and he said, okay, well, I'm just going to decertify the unions. Um, you guys no longer have the power to uh, bargain 
with us anymore. <laughs> We're just going to decertify you. And so that's when you saw all the protests and things, you know, right. went nationwide, and they made it seem like Madison, Wisconsin was the, you know, was the Middle East with the Arab Spring uprising almost, you know. Right. It was, it was on all the news, right. It was everywhere. Right, right. So... So you've got all kinds of stuff going on there. So, but because he decertified the unions, then he was able to um, give give like the teachers' union in Wisconsin is the most powerful union in Wisconsin. He was able to make so that they no longer had to bar barter with WEAC for their insurance benefits. WEAC is the Wisconsin Educators Association. The, their, it's it's their insurance agency. Right. They own it. They run it. They set the rates. Yep. 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 And so he he put it out to more of a free market and said, okay, we're no we're going to open it up to any other insurance agency that wants to bid on these contracts. Well, WEAC would dropped drop some of their like in. I don't know. I can't cite a single one, but I mean, we're talking forty million dollars in different districts that they dropped their cost to to the to insure the teachers. Um, and and, the, and then with the uh, teachers having to pay in a little extra for their pensions and a little extra for their benefits, still nothing major. Right. All of a sudden, we went from a huge deficit that rated many other funds and rated many other. Um, things to now we're operating in the black again, and literally nobody had to get laid off. Um, there were some there were some complications where um, some of the unions had you know some of the districts had refused to whatever had refused to go along with this, and they bargained with their un got contracts with their unions before all this legislation made its way through. But um, and so they didn't get the benefits of this. Of this, and so they still owed, and then they ended up having to lay off teachers instead of being able to just increase the contributions these teachers were given. They had to go back and lay off by seniority, um, which by seniority, the senior members of the teachers were the ones that stayed, you know, right. of course. Um, but I mean, there's just so many things in there. So during that time, um, the uh, there was a justice that was up for election. He was either up for election or he was being recalled. I think, yeah, I'm a little confused. And some of those petitions that she was talking about, like justice, there was Kapanki and somebody's recall, and then there was somebody else's recall. There was the 21,000 um, petitions signed, which 9,000 of them were in vote. She's referring back to some of these recalls that happened as a result of the union really starting to get stirred up because they'd been decertified. Um, they had to lay a lot of their own management off. You know, suddenly the the Democrats were really concerned because that's where a lot of their money comes in, right? Right. <laughs> union, union dues, right? Right. Yeah, their union dues. All of a sudden, these people are, these teachers are going to have to willingly contribute instead of the state collecting them just automatically out of the paychecks. These people are going to have to voluntarily, and and you know nobody's going to do that. Right. Very few. You know? Right. <laughs> now, you know? could, in your state, that you could recall a judge. Um. There was. I'm trying to remember if he was recalled. Or if he was um, defeated, maybe. If he was just on his, I, m I might be getting a couple different things mixed up. Yeah, I because remember. I know there was. All I know is, and, and, and I I know very little. Just to be clear, I know very. You've already just told me more than I know, but I do know that there was three or four senators, and I know this from the mainstream media, you know, CNN, Fox, whatever. Uh, the there was. Three or four senators being recalled. I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about prior to this. Three or four senators being recalled and the governor being recalled. Right. Now, right. Uh, I don't know about this judge thing and, you know, different names, and I don't want to get into all these specifics and technical stuff, but the gist of it is what you just said. 
the the governor tried to make some cuts. Unions flipped out. I'm, I'm simplifying it for those who want the simple version. The unions freaked out. Now they're trying to get rid of the governor. That's pretty much where we're at, right? It's pretty much it. This, something similar happened in Ohio, I think, with their governor, and he tried to... Uh, he tried to make the unions pay in some things, and because they weren't able to get the reforms in place, the right. people just kind of took the side of the union, like, "Oh man, this is horrible!" You know, they're losing their rights, and they're, lo- you know, and. Um, but they didn't recall the governor in Ohio, though, did they? No, no, they didn't. They didn't right. uh, go. I think that went out by um, where everybody has to vote on it. Everybody had to vote on that legislation, and it got turned down. What the heck you doing over? Sounds like you're busting the place up. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I don't know about these recalls. I'm going to take a, a a kind of a screwy position on this, and I'm going to tell you why. Every four years, you've got a chance, or two years, depending on the post, six years, ten years, whatever the number is, you got a chance to recall people, okay? Right. Right. And it's called don't vote for them. And then they lose, and then it's over. Wake up to the facts. When good people are silent, freedom dies. Don't be afraid to ask those tough questions. Be a patriot and join the struggle to keep America free. Help us end the silence. FreedomDies.com. Let your voice be heard.